Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Emma Gannon, The Success Myth, Letting Go of Having It All in a World That Constantly Pushes You to Chase Bigger Dreams, Accumulate More Wealth and Achieve Higher Status, The True Essence of Success Often Gets Lost. There's a myth of success which suggests there's a definitive formula to follow, a set pathway to ultimate fulfillment and happiness. Yet, as many who have attempted to follow this path can attest, the reality is far more complex. The concept of success has been marketed to us as a one-size-fits-all achievement involving fame, fortune, and perpetual productivity. But this often leads to burnout, disillusionment, and a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction. The pressure to have it all sets unrealistic expectations while overlooking the importance of personal well-being, meaningful relationships, and authentic happiness. In this summary, you'll learn to dismantle these myths of success. You'll explore the limitations of wealth in providing happiness, the downsides of relentless productivity, the hollow nature of fame, and the illusion that reaching any milestone can deliver permanent joy. By shifting your perspective, you'll discover how to redefine success on your own terms, focusing on what truly brings fulfillment and joy to your life. Chapter 1. The Myth of Happiness The myth of happiness have you ever been walking down the street, lost in thought, when someone tells you to smile? This familiar and often frustrating experience, particularly for women, is a troubling symptom of a pervasive societal expectation, the belief that we should be happy all the time. In reality, happiness is just one of many fleeting emotions that people experience. Trying to maintain a state of constant happiness is neither sustainable nor healthy, often leading to emotional dishonesty and distress. There's a gap between the societal ideal of perpetual happiness and the actual emotional states many individuals report. In fact, studies reveal the significant portions of populations experience overwhelming stress and persistent sadness. In other words, we're not as happy as we're told we should be. So what could be causing this gap between expected and experienced emotions? Social media plays a part, exacerbating expectations by displaying curated lives filled with joy and success, which can make everyday users feel inadequate. This digital distortion can deepen the dissatisfaction and emotional strain felt by many. Really, we need to acknowledge the full spectrum of human emotions for true emotional health. Emotions like sadness, nostalgia, or tranquility are all essential parts of the human experience, and valuing these feelings alongside happiness can lead to a richer, more authentic life. So instead of striving for constant happiness, focus on managing your emotions effectively. One practical technique is reframing negative thoughts. This shifts your perspective on difficult situations to prevent them from escalating. For example, if you wake up feeling overwhelmed by tiredness and a busy schedule, you might initially think, I'm exhausted and can't face this day. But you can reframe this thought to, hey, I'm tired because I've been working hard and achieving my goals, and I'm proud of the effort I'm putting in. This can change your outlook and reduce feelings of dread. Reframing can be applied throughout the day. When minor mishaps occur, like dropping your lunch or breaking an umbrella, instead of spiraling into frustration, you might reframe your thoughts to focus on the positives or the trivial nature of these setbacks. This shift in thinking acknowledges the issue without allowing it to overshadow the good aspects of your life. Aiming for constant happiness is unrealistic and can be harmful. Maintaining emotional authenticity and resilience is a more practical and fulfilling approach. So embrace the natural variability of your emotions, and you will be prepared to handle life's challenges more effectively. Chapter 2. The Myth of Productivity The myth of productivity in 1965, a U.S. Senate subcommittee predicted that advances in technology would drastically reduce our working hours by the year 2000. If this hasn't been your experience, you're not alone. Instead, it seems that the modern to-do list keeps getting longer. We glamorize overworking, wear exhaustion as a badge of honor, and constantly move on to the next task without taking a moment to breathe. 
Our working days have even increased by two hours since email became accessible on our phones. Is this relentless hustle really what success looks like? Focusing so intensely on productivity has significant downsides, particularly in terms of mental health. There's a stigma around admitting you need a break, especially for mental health reasons. It's often easier to claim a physical ailment than to confess to needing a day just to decompress. Despite growing awareness, this stigma persists. Technology, while promising to ease our loads, often intensifies the pressure to be perpetually productive. From apps that summarize books in minutes to tools that promise to streamline every aspect of life, the push to do more in less time is everywhere. But this often leads to a superficial engagement with information and a relentless pace that burns people out. The personal toll of this productivity push can be severe. Many find themselves working through illness, sacrificing sleep, and being unable to disconnect from work, even during supposed downtime. Maybe we need to fundamentally rethink our approach to work and productivity. Instead of glorifying overwork, we should value balance and recognize when our bodies and minds demand rest. Listen to your body when it tells you to slow down. Reflect on the pressures you put on yourself for productivity. Can you reduce your to-do list or offer yourself more time? Think about what feeling you are chasing when being productive. Satisfaction? Feeling enough? Proving something to yourself? Maybe there are other ways to achieve these feelings. In a world obsessed with output, we need to learn to set boundaries around work and understand the value of downtime. Recognizing that being constantly on isn't sustainable is the first step toward healthier work habits and ultimately a more balanced life. Chapter 3. The Myth of Celebrity The myth of celebrity at the 2016 Golden Globe Awards, Jim Carrey humorously introduced himself as a two-time winner, joking about how becoming a three-time winner would finally make him feel enough. This moment was met with nervous laughter from his successful peers, an uncomfortable reminder of the empty chase for status that dominates celebrity culture. It revealed a deep-seated misconception that fame and recognition equate to personal fulfillment. The allure of fame has changed slightly over time. Historically, people sought fame to leave a lasting legacy. Today, the focus is on immediate recognition during one's lifetime, reflecting the societal shift where public validation is closely tied to personal identity and perceived success. This modern obsession with fame reveals how deeply external approval has become embedded in our sense of self-worth and achievement. Celebrities often voice the emptiness of this fame themselves. Despite having wealth, security, and adulation, many remain unfulfilled, challenging the public assumption that a celebrity's life is one of inherent joy and satisfaction. This paradox is further fueled by the media, which often reduces celebrities to mere objects of speculation and entertainment, overlooking their genuine talents and vulnerabilities. Think of the pursuit of fame as an ego addiction, a drive that's not necessarily malignant, but that's indicative of a society that values status above many other qualities. This addiction can lead to a cycle where personal worth is measured by popularity and external achievements, overshadowing more meaningful personal accomplishments and inner growth. Once again, social media shares a large portion of the blame. It provides a platform for people to achieve recognition, creating a new wave of micro-influencers who can gain status without traditional media. But this democratization of fame also brings its own pressures and mental health challenges. Influencers often face burnout through the relentless need to produce content, leading to anxiety and depression. Research shows that status and validation are deeply embedded in our psyche because of evolutionary reasons. Our ancestors gained better access to resources and mates by proving their value to the tribe. Today, status can still improve material conditions, but the continuous pursuit can trap individuals in a cycle of dissatisfaction. The key takeaway is to reevaluate our measures of success. True fulfillment comes from personal achievements, meaningful relationships, and living authentically rather than chasing external validation. 
Assessing and appreciating our own worth can lead to a deeper, more sustainable sense of satisfaction than fame or status ever could. Chapter 4 The Myth of Money The myth of money a multimillionaire boy band member once said in an interview, money doesn't buy happiness because the best things in life are free. Despite his wealth, he appeared defensive, worried, and insecure, admitting he missed his home and his family. This seems to be a common narrative. Wealth and fame do not guarantee happiness. Money is undoubtedly important. It can solve many problems and alleviate stress, providing comfort and security. Financial stability impacts well-being, improving sleep quality, health, and the ability to refuse unfavorable situations. But our cultural obsession with excessive wealth often confuses financial stability with the need to accumulate vast amounts of money. Studies show that while money increases happiness up to a point beyond a certain threshold, additional income doesn't significantly boost happiness. A 2010 study by Kahneman and Deaton found that this threshold is around $75,000 annually. Beyond this, additional income has little effect. This highlights the misconception that more money continuously increases happiness. In terms of Maslow's hierarchy, money is essential for fulfilling our basic physiological and safety needs, such as food, shelter, and security. Once these foundational needs are met, additional wealth can enhance comfort and convenience, supporting higher-level psychological and self-fulfillment needs like relationships, esteem, and personal growth. But money doesn't fundamentally increase overall happiness. The endless pursuit of luxury can trap individuals, altering their self-perception and perpetuating a cycle of wanting more. The societal glorification of excess often obscures the reality that endless accumulation does not lead to lasting fulfillment. Money can meet basic needs and provide comfort, but beyond this, it doesn't equate to happiness. Striving for excessive wealth can create new stressors, isolating individuals and making them less happy. One way to break this cycle of accumulation would be some kind of universal basic income, which would provide a set amount of money to every citizen regularly and so ensure that everyone's basic needs are met. This approach could reduce societal stress and improve overall well-being by ensuring that basic needs are met without the relentless pursuit of excessive wealth. Advocates believe it would encourage people to thrive without being bogged down by financial struggles. In the end, True wealth involves more than just money. It encompasses time, happiness, and well-being. Recognizing and valuing different forms of currency can lead to a more balanced and fulfilling life. By shifting your perspective on wealth, you can find greater meaning and fulfillment beyond financial gain. Chapter 5. The Myth of Arrival The Myth of Arrival Picture This for years, you've dreamed about publishing your first book, and it's finally happened. The book launch is thrilling, full of celebration and a sense of accomplishment. And yet, a few months later, you feel deflated and unfulfilled, despite having achieved your goal. This anticlimax is a common experience, highlighting the illusion of lasting happiness from significant achievements. It's because of what we call the arrival fallacy, which falsely suggests that reaching a milestone will bring enduring joy. Many people come face to face with this fallacy, not just when publishing a book, but also in relation to other significant life events, like landing a dream job, buying a new home, getting a promotion, completing a marathon, or even getting married. Of course, these milestones are significant and worth celebrating, but they often don't bring the lasting joy we expect. Once the initial excitement fades, life continues with its usual ups and downs. The arrival fallacy leaves us feeling disappointed because we believe that achieving certain goals will transform our lives and bring lasting happiness. Instead, we need to recognize that true contentment comes from ongoing personal growth, meaningful relationships, and living authentically, rather than from reaching specific milestones. Psychological psychologist Dr. Sophie Mord explains that when you achieve a milestone, you lose the structure and purpose that the pursuit of the milestone provided, leaving you feeling lost. 
Success in one area doesn't mean all areas of life are perfect, and achieving a dream doesn't erase life's challenges or personal issues. For instance, you can publish that first book while simultaneously facing personal losses. Success in one aspect doesn't shield against difficulties in others. Adam Grant, a psychology professor, emphasizes that success is a temporary thrill. True happiness lies in daily activities that bring joy and fulfillment. Achievements are part of life, not the ultimate solution to all problems. So instead of chasing the illusion of permanent happiness through major achievements, focus on the present. Enjoy the small, daily moments that bring joy. Success should be viewed as an ongoing journey, not a final destination. By shifting your focus to daily joys and personal values, you can find lasting fulfillment and redefine what success means to you. This is one of the steps in dismantling the success myth and revealing that true contentment comes from within, not from external achievements. Final Summary the main takeaway of this summary to the success myth by Emma Gannon is that true fulfillment and success are found not in external achievements or societal expectations, but in daily joys, meaningful relationships, and living authentically. By embracing a broader, more personal definition of success, you can navigate life's ups and downs with greater contentment and resilience. Recognizing the myths of perpetual happiness, relentless productivity, fame, and wealth allows you to redefine what truly matters, leading to a more balanced and fulfilling life. Shift your perspective to appreciate the present, and you'll discover that genuine satisfaction comes from within. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, Please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.